Greetings and welcome to our Hit Miss Maybe from a blog to watch weekly live. You may be tuning in here live on YouTube. You may be listening on the podcast. You may be watching the replay on YouTube. I don't know where you're watching this or what you're doing, but we are joined by some fellow a blog to watch weekly team. And let's see who they are, where they are, and what they are wearing. Ripley, where are you, and what are you wearing today? Well, I'm normally in sunny California. It is very rainy, so I'm in rainy Los Angeles, and I am wearing the Timex three time zone chronograph. Uh, when this watch was released, I thought, who needs three time zones and a chronograph? But it's perfect for this. I've got all you gents on the uh, one hand. David, you're up here in Budapest, and uh, I'm the 12 hour hand. So it works out perfectly. <laughs> and the chronograph tracking elapsed time, it all makes so much sense. <laughs> David, David, drum roll, is David wearing a watch and is indeed still in Hungary? Way, we have a watch. What do we have, David? Yes, it's the Siga Design Eye of Horus that I reviewed on the blog to watch in like 3,000 words. So that I had quite a lot to say about this $199 uh, watch. So yeah, just go and check it out. It's, it's quite something. Great stuff. Right, Ralph, where are you and what are you wearing? I am coming from the wintry but still sunny Dubai, and I am wearing today my 1973, oops, 1973 um, Seema, oh, there you go. Yeah, we're, we're so Seema organized, Star. I even have a picture. Yeah, mm -hmm. this was, uh, I got an extract from the archives about this watch, and it was originally delivered in 1973 to Burundi. To Burundi. Mm -hmm. uh, who was the king, <laughs> queen uh, person in charge? Because it was presumably not going to the common people of Burundi. No, there's no no allegation oh, no. that this was from some nefarious part of some nefarious. It was team. a bribe, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but there's only good vibes on this watch. Oh, that's only, for sure. Only yeah. good vibes. Well, <laughs> this next watch, there's certainly been a couple of good vibes on. Bear in mind the condition and state that it's in. Kevin, where are you and what are you wearing? Oh, gosh, thank you. <laughs> I am in Kent. It's not so sunny here, but I'm wearing a, wow, picture, uh, Omega uh, Speedmaster X33, uh, first generation from 1999, I think it is. Yeah, it's been worn. Yeah, I think yeah it's, it's absolutely wow. epic. Brilliant. <laughs> Love it. Definitely I've not watched, a safe queen. I've got a Tiso T-Touch, which basically looks the same as this <laughs> completely battered but i am of course wearing a pad right and i'm in scotland so that is all as per usual right so first up this week in hit miss maybe we're gonna give it to ripley because he actually wrote the article but this is new release the hamilton ventura blue suede shoes quartz watch ripley tell us about this watch uh, so the original, you know, the first Hamilton in 1957, the original Ventura came out. It was the world's first electric wristwatch. That does not mean quartz. That means electronic. Um, these, you know, Elvis famously wore the Ventura, uh, had multiple models. Um, these are blue dial versions of the quartz Ventura lineup. Um, you get two, I guess it's technically three models, six references total. You get the chronograph on a bracelet or strap. You get a gold one on a bracelet or strap, and then you get a, a steel version three-hander on a bracelet or strap. Uh, they're loosely inspired by Elvis' song Blue Suede Shoes um, because they've got a blue gradient dial, and you can get them with a blue strap. Kind of, you know, pay homage to Elvis, a famous Hamilton Ventura wearer. Um, quartz movements, uh, steel cases, mineral glass crystals, uh, which is a, a little bit of a letdown, um, but you know, interesting take on, you know, one of their more unusual and signature designs. Great stuff. So let's give this the judgment of the gang. So on the count of three, is it a hit? Is it a miss or is it a maybe? One, two, three, go. Oh. So we have three hits and two maybe. So Ripley, you give it a review. It sounds like a good review, but you're only giving it a maybe. Yeah, so... Just two little gripes for me. As far as aesthetics, it's a hit. Uh, they just seem a little bit expensive for just kind of this quartz watch uh, uh, with the mineral glass crystal. Honestly, I'm not really a big crystal material snob, but if you are paying, you know, close to a thousand dollars 
go ahead and make it out of sapphire. I understand it's a it's a difficult shape to make. This is hardly a standard part for that to fit the case. I 100% understand why they went with mineral. My God, is it not a deal breaker? But when you say you're paying $1,000 for a quartz watch with a mineral crystal, it's a little bit of a tough pill to swallow. That said, I love the way they look. Give me one of the gold ones on the bracelet. Um, maybe if I saw them in person, I might feel a bit differently. But you know, I'm having a little bit of a hard time with the price. But objectively speaking, I think they'd be a ton of fun to wear. Good stuff. David, how did you vote and why? I voted hit and it's because I have a soft spot for the Ventura. I think it's just such an awesome design and it looks even better in person and on the wrist. I'm happy it exists. I'm happy that Hamilton is taking care of this collection. And uh, for all those reasons, it's, it's definitely a hit for me. The, I, I give it a hit as well. They do wear surprisingly well. You would think that this was like not going to be comfortable just because it's unusual, but actually... They are really cool to wear, and you do feel like a pet detective uh, wearing them. So <laughs> there is there is no doubt about that. Cat Kevin is your inner pet detective or inner blues. I could imagine you being an Elvis impersonator in, in Vegas. Hell no. Have you got Have you got that in, Have you got that in your locker somewhere? I definitely have not. I definitely have not. So I voted this a hit. I disagree with Ripley. I think it's surprisingly good value, even though it is a quartz. Um, um, my only gripe with this is the uh, date window on the chrono. It would be better if it was black, sorry, blue, but um, it's sort of almost black and it's graduated dial, so you can, they do get away with it. But um, I think it's it's great value for money. Sorry, Ripley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. Fight Club. Uh, Ralph, <laughs> you gave it a maybe, I think. Yeah, I give it a maybe just for the history that it has, and I think this is an iconic shape, shape, but I do not like it personally. So for me, it's just like, a, mm, it should be featured in a silly science fiction movie. Oh, wait a second. Oh, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think nah, it's not for me. But um, I do feel that this has been a very futuristic shape back in the day. So it's it's nice that it's still there. So that's why I gave it a maybe. Great stuff. Right, let's carry on. Yeah, I'm I'm almost afraid to discuss this watch because of my particular uh, appreciations of the brand. But we are going on the website. We went hands on with the Panerai Radiomir annual calendar watch. Uh, yeah, it's it's Panerai, so it's kind of got everything you would expect, except that this also has an annual calendar. It's the Radiomir case rather than the Luminor, which probably more people are familiar with with the funny uh, crown guard it's gold tech whatever that means nobody really knows i'm not really even sure that panerai know what it means but it is a very pretty watch from my point of view uh, but what does everybody else think so gentlemen is this a hit is it a miss or is it a maybe and your marks get set go Okay, we have three hits, a maybe, and a miss. Let's deal with uh, Ralph. You gave it a hit. Why is this yeah. Panerai a hit? I think, um, I mean, Panerai is 45 millimeters, way smaller on the wrist. I had um, a Radiomir for, for a long time. I wore, it was my most worn watch, and then I sold it in the same year when it was actually my most worn watch. Um, Okay, because so, it was so, just because you're an idiot because what <laughs> no i thought i thought yes i love it and i have i've done the normal radio mirror base logo right small seconds uh -huh. but i thought eventually i will get another one and a nicer one so oh, okay. sounds like a bad rom-com movie if you love something set it free it, yeah <laughs> let it go so and uh i did and i think it's a uh, it's a really, really lovely watch in this in this gold tag, which is just normal normal gold. But every every brand has to call it Setna Gold and Rollis Sore and uh, what God knows, right? Because it's <laughs> just cooler to call it something. Um, but I feel it's not overladen, so it's actually quite cool for an annual calendar. And um, I I do like gold recently. I don't know why, but I think it's probably the age. I feel like gold watches are the future at the moment, at least for my collection. <laughs> <laughs> are, are, are we feeling the uh, inflationary pressures worldwide? We're all heading to gold, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> uh, Kevin, how did you pass muster on this? 
I thought it was a hit. I actually do like this watch extremely. Uh, it's it's superb. Hannah and I, in the past couple of years, have gone down in my estimation, and I haven't liked the designs and the way they've been going. However, this is um, the coming back to uh, what I think is um, the way forward. It's a fantastic design. Um, it's not complicated. I love the um, annual calendar. Uh, my Italian is not great, so but even I can work out which month and which day is which. <laughs> um, but the case size, yeah, it, it does wear smaller than the 45 it states. So whoever, if you ever get a chance to go into Panerai Boutique and try on a 45 or 44, you'd be surprisingly how comfortable they wear. Um, it's a hit all day long. It's not for me. The colour of gold doesn't suit my, my skin tone. And I'm not really a fan of gold watches anyway. However, this will be a, a solid hit for Panerai going forward. And I can't wait for the stainless steel version, hopefully coming out soonish maybe a year or two we'll see but yeah, yeah th this was released at watches and wonders last year so yeah we'll yeah. see what they follow up with this year i gave this a maybe <laughs> because i absolutely love this watch but it breaks my cardinal rule and so i have to stick to it that if you're going to be an annual calendar you have to show all three elements the same way <sighs> if you're going to use windows use windows for all three parts like the zenith does if you're going to use pointers or dials, use pointers or dials for all three of them. Don't confuse me by pointing to one thing and displaying another. You're so obviously that's... easily confused. I am the problem. easily confused. <laughs> so it's moving around so fast. Uh, so yeah, easily confused. But yeah, don't... You know, the, effectively, the, the month is being shown at 90 degrees to the rest of the information. Mm -hmm. It's just not, yeah. I'm sorry. It's a design quirk. It's a design quirk. <laughs> it's, it, what's it they say? It's a. It's not a fault. It's a feature. Is that yes, exactly? Is that the phrase? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, so I'm giving it a move for that, but I would wear this every day of the week. But every time I looked at it, I would be reminded that I was breaking my own uh, design rules in terms of uh, calendar displays. David, what did you vote? Yeah, I voted a miss on this. Um, a big, big giant miss, uh, actually. I think it, this watch just looks like an early sketch to me. Um, it doesn't look particularly refined. I feel like they realize that if they write half of the dial in Italian, they will get away with it. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> like, okay, that's it. Our job is sorted. Great. <laughs> it, it, it's, you know, oh, thank goodness we're technically Italian. Um, and yeah, it's just not something, it, the proportions are kind of off. The case is very bulky, even by my Panerai standards, to my eyes, proportion-wise. I love the Rodeomir very much. I would take uh, a gold California dial Rodeomir anytime. Uh, but this one, um, I think we could all live without a annual calendar Panerai. I'm not even sure why it exists, uh, to be honest. Oh, no. Ripley, tell us why it exists. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, Kevin sending help. <laughs> I, I said it's a hit. Um, I yeah. said it's a hit. Because well, look at Panerai as a brand. They're so confined from a design perspective. Every single watch they make is going to be a Radiomir or a Luminor. I brought up the Mara Nostrum in an interview and they looked at me like I had, you know, spoken blasphemy. They're like, no, 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 we're not. You're not supposed not. to talk about it. <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't talk we about that. We forget about that. <laughs> not in front of company. Oh, my, I don't know. So. So the, the fact that they can't really go anywhere with their designs from like, a, you know, a cardinal perspective makes me really, really appreciate the models that go somewhere differently, uh, either in terms of how they implement a complication or just not being the same, you know, base Luminor type of setup. Um, I kind of like the way, you know, I think one of the things Panerai does really well, almost too far sometimes, is making a complicated watch look very simple. Some of the GMTs, you just put an AM PM indicator, it's useless for me. You know, there's no scale or anything for it. But you know, <laughs> a, a equation of time. No one needs that. Period. Yeah. But equation of know, time is just simply the best watch that Panerai <laughs> make. I'm sorry, you're just wrong. Oh, I, well, I, I love it for that reason. But but yeah, absolutely <laughs> useless. In, in this instance, I love the way they kind of implemented it. It's not impractical. I think the proportions could use a little bit of work. David's correct there. But at the same time, I think this is this is fresh for being a Panerai, and I would love to see this concept expanded in a different way uh because you know if you change certain elements with the dial you could be left with a watch that really wouldn't feel like a radiomir 
Um, and I think that's big for Panerai, just to be able to kind of push the design envelope. I think it's a fun implementation of an annual calendar. And the simple fact that it's, you know, a little bit different for them, I've got to give them props for that. So it's a hit. Good stuff, good stuff. Right. Well, those of you that are listening to the podcast, you're going to miss out on us chatting about the Gerald Genta Disney Watch and the Ublo Classic Fusion as we play Classic Hitmas, maybe. Uh, so if you would like to catch up on that, then do search out the a Blog to Watch Weekly Live YouTube channel and uh, catch up with those reviews then. So for those that are tuning in, we'll see you again in a few minutes. Okay, so next up is the Gerald Genta Mickey Mouse Watch. Is it a Mickey Mouse Watch? What do we think about having cartoon characters on watches in general? Is it acceptable? If it is acceptable, is this one of the few times that it's either not acceptable? Or is this the OG and is therefore <laughs> the only place that it is acceptable? What do we think gathered gentlemen is this a hit a miss or a maybe one two three uh, we have two hits two maybes and a miss interesting mm. very much more divided than i thought it would be ripley <laughs> why do you agree with me that this watch is a hit so i do not like it for myself it's not anything i would ever spend my money on i'm not even really a big disney fan um but what I love is that it is a high complication Mickey Mouse watch. In the States, we use the term Mickey Mouse as a, you know, slang for like a non-serious, low quality, uh, you know, poorly conceived type of thing. Uh, so a Mickey Mouse watch, in, you know, in LA, you know, American slang would be like a non-serious cheap watch. The fact that you can get a like a complicated, highly executed Mickey Mouse watch is uh is just kind of fantastic from a conceptual whimsy standpoint and if i was a big like c-level executive at disney or something like that this is 100 percent i would what i would have on my wrist um just because it is two polar opposite sides and you know it, it you think of a mickey mouse watch it's a quartz cheap handed three-handed thing this is it skips 500 steps in between and then you arrive at this so it's a hit for me so you like it for the gag I, I like it for the audacity of, of of making a watch at this price point to this crafted to this degree with these complications uh, and, and then putting, you know, the cartoon mouse on it that, you know, frequently, you know, is a, a fitted to T-shirts and, and hats with ears on it. <laughs> I, Kevin, you look like a man who owns one of those hats with ears on it that you can make, make auto clap with a bit of silly string. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll just try and get to it now, actually. But um, <laughs> it's, I mean, my vote was a maybe. I mean, I understand his concept. Um, and I, I mean, uh, it's, it's a unique design, but it's not for me. I can see people gravitating to it because of the Gerald Genta name, basically. That's the one good thing about it. The design itself, it's a bit, I think it's a bit clunky. I really do. That dial is far too fussy for me, but it redeems itself because of the jumping hour mechanism mm -hmm. complication. It, it is fantastic. I mean, fantastic watch. I know it's going in for auction. Is there a reserve on it? What's, what's the reserve on it? A couple of hundred thousand or something? Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening to it now because this was going to be the watch for only watch. I think that's right. David, yeah, there's no reserve, but it's going to be a couple hundred thousand for sure. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's it, just because it's a minute repeater as well as a as mm. a jumper. It's got all the toys on it in terms of, as Ripley mm -hmm. says, uh, high complication. David, is it high enough complication for you? Uh, very much so. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of Disney and, and Mickey Mouse, to be honest. Uh, but, you know, it's an easy swap for a new dial and a new hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I... If you're buying this in auction for a million dollars, yeah, I'll just swap the dial out for... Yeah, what, what yeah. Did... We, we have just discussed on the show about giving watch models from one brand to another. So give the Speedmaster, take it away from one again, give it to Rolex or somebody. Who would you take this away from, Mickey Mouse? You know, like who would you, if it couldn't be Mickey Mouse, who would you put on it? Sure well, I'm not sure, character. but what I what I do know is that I I really uh, enjoyed Genta's baroque and outlandish dials and designs over the years. Um, some of them were very much over the top and would go beautifully with this case, actually, and even the red strap. So, 
um yeah it's just it's just a personal thing overall it's a fantastic watch i mean it's a minute repeater jumping hour what more do we want right mm -hmm. so i'm happy oh, it, it exists i, I would mean, give this to patek philippe imagine instead of mickey mouse it's a uh, you know terry stern, stern just like yeah it's his face. <laughs> <laughs> I think David just needs to confess, and we all know he'd be putting like Homer Simpson or somebody on this as as an alternative to to Mickey. Mouse or, oh, or, or, or some post-Soviet mascot that I I was watching when I was growing up. Maybe maybe, maybe <laughs> that, that would be <laughs> great stuff. Ralph, this floating yeah. boat or not? No, it's it's definitely a miss for me. It's a lovely watch from a from a from an orological perspective. It's great technically. It's it's a fantastic watch, but it should have been a Minnie Mouse. <laughs> See, all, all of that just for all of that waiting. Did it annoy you that I came to your last that you were having to wait the whole way through for that gag? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but honestly, I think it's a. I have a friend who's a collector who showed me his Mickey Mouse Gerald Genta watches. Right. And he, I had no idea that these are Gerald Genta watches. And he yeah. showed them to me and I said, look, look, look at these. I have three of them. And I was like, what? so what? <laughs> I mean, it's like, is that, a, is it rare? It's like a, like a super swatch that, that does exist only five times. And now oh, Gerald Genta. And I said, like, well, ooh. so yeah, for me, it's just, um, I don't know. I'm not I'm not a fan. I think it's it's a watch that even if you are a very good collector, and I mean, good, it's for an auction, so uh -huh. great cause. So that's lovely. But other than that, I think it's just, a, I think Gerald Genta did designed a lot of misses in uh -huh. his life, lots of fails, and that's one of them, I think. Yeah. No, fair yeah. enough. I, I do think there needs to be a bit of an inquiry as to why you own a Minnie Mouse and why people are going around showing you their Mickey Mouses. But that's a conversation for another day. Uh, okay, our classic review this week is going to be, our classic vote is going to be about Hublot. So the Hublot Classic Fusion Original Watches, there's an article here from 2023, which was a kind of revival. And if you dig right back to the earliest I could find on a blog to watch about Fusion Watches was 2010. I don't know if this was actually the release uh, I don't actually know when they were released. I didn't do enough homework. Uh, in fact, this article is so old you can't even click on the pictures to enlarge them. It was it was a different technology back in those days at a blog to watch, but we can highlight the new iterations of these. So take yourself back in time. You are busy with your Rolex day dates and your Speedmasters and all the rest of it, and Ublo come along with these classic fusions. You're a watch geek, we'll grant you that. And upon seeing these, are you voting a hit, a miss, or a maybe? Give us your vote. No, oh, it's five hits. <laughs> ah, you oh, see, deep down, old, you're all Ublo fans. Confess. Confess. I own four of them. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> David, David, the only person to have bought an Hublot at full retail. Uh, yeah. there we go. <laughs> so uh... I was adamant. <laughs> That's right. You were not taking that 30% off RRP. David, <laughs> tell us tell us why this is a hit. I mean, these are just brilliant, even today. I mean, they, they've stood the test of time, I think. They're sleek, sharp, elegant. Don't take too much to explain. You just look at them and you're you're uh, you feel this gravitas. I think it's it's a very sharp design. Back from like 1980, I think it, it dates back. Not the classic back, fusion yeah. per se, yeah. but the, but the core design itself. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, Kevin. Oh, hopefully my wife is not watching this because I am secretly looking to buy one of the the new ones came out last year is, I it, is, is this because you're looking to buy it for her and you don't want to spoil the surprise or because you're looking to buy it for you and you want to make sure the box is hidden uh it's definitely for myself oh, i okay. reckon these are just <laughs> incredible i never buy anything for my wife she has to buy for herself so whatever <laughs> she wants but never mind uh, welcome um, to agony ant corner weekly <laughs> I, I love the design on these. Um, I am seriously tempted to buy to purchase one. Obviously, not a full price, but it's a. It says in its name, it's a classic design. It's beautiful. The three hander is beautiful. It's so simple, so clean, 
What's not to like? Mm. What is not to like? Mm. Mm. Ripley, you go to the hip, but can you find anything not to like? Um, I mean, things can always be less expensive, but no, I, I, I think, I mean, I, I often joke about Ublo, but I'm firmly a fan of the brand and I admire them a lot on, on you know, multiple different levels. Uh, like David said, this design's brilliant. Uh, even today, it very much has its roots in the original Ublo from the, the 1980s. And, it, you know, it's uh, was pioneering for the time. You know, you can thank Ublo for the fact that we've got rubber you know, straps on watches of all different price points, real, really, realistically speaking. Um, and, you know, it, especially for the time, it was revolutionary, but still today, these watches hold up. I would 100% own one. Um, and, you know, these might be some of the most tasteful modern Hublots. So if you like that bold design language and don't want a neon yellow sapphire thing, you know, here, this is, this is a bit more tame than the last Orlinskis we talked about. Yeah. Uh, David, is it possible in light of our previous conversations as we've been recording this morning that Hublot could be the watch brand to save uh, watchmaking? Uh, that's a stretch. <laughs> <I think. laughs> but our discussions earlier on were about uh, how all well, these brands are getting distracted by all these brand ambassadors and all this kind of nonsense and bobbins. And Hublot actually are one of these brands, they just do the Hublot thing. I was going to say, what sort of orological apocalypse are you projecting here? Because it, it really depends whether Hublot can save us or not. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. not Don't the hero. We, they're, was it? They're not the hero we need. They're just the hero we've got. Is that the yeah. phrase? Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's. It's not, but it's close. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ralph. A hit for you. Yeah, it's a hit for me because I think they are insanely comfortable to wear. Uh, I think they were ahead of time when they were released. Um, they grew on me. I didn't like them in the beginning, but I think once you have them on your wrist and you feel it, it's just a, it's a very, very good watch and it's mm. a really, really nice design. But there's one thing that I don't like. I think the new ones have um, the date window too far inside in the bigger sizes. If you put that picture back on the screen yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. I... In the old times, they had a special module on top of a very basic <laughs> new movement in order to push the date wheel to the side, a bigger date wheel. They had an extra mm. module on the top mm. of it. So that was their modification. But it seems to be not the case anymore, which is a yes. bit weird. Yeah, that is a very good observation. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, and on that note of an actual, genuine, horological observation, <laughs> we will leave Hit Miss Maybe there with Ralph bringing the actual geekness to the show. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. If you are now back on the podcast, you have missed chat comparing a Mickey Mouse Genta with an Ublo Classic Fusion. And, you know, just to do one of those kind of Nico Vanderhorst kind of things, you will be shocked at what the outcome is. Uh, between <laughs> comparing these two watches, we'll get someone to make up a wee, a wee, you know, image for YouTube with me, with us all screaming or Mickey Mouse hands or something everywhere. So do uh, tap up the YouTube channel for a comparison, sort of, between Gerald Genta and Ublo Classic Fusion, a phrase you never thought you'd hear anywhere else. But uh, yeah, thank you all for listening or viewing. Her you tuned in, and it's goodbye for me, and it's goodbye. Well, goodbye, goodbye for Minnie Mouse. Make it my Ciao. <laughs> Thanks. Bye bye. Ciao. That's that's lip for my Italian, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, folks. <laughs>